Oh. Oh, man. Oh, it hits me in the nose. Oh, mierda. This in here. Right one. All right, this is what you guys have been waiting for. So I've been on this bike now for eight months. <clears throat> just past 50,000 kilometers, 31,000 miles, and I'm gonna do a full comprehensive review because you've been asking and because it deserves it. First of all, the engine, parallel twin, smooth, really even power. It's got, I think, over 90 something plus horsepower, so it's not gonna be your, your BMW or your KTM with 120, 130, but really, really smooth, reliable power. In my opinion, that's what makes bikes more reliable. It's a little lower compression, so 1,000 cylinders, 90 horsepower, plenty of power to carry me and all my weight around. The suspension. So lots of talk about the suspension on the Africa Twin. First of all, suspensions were good. This is stock suspension straight from the showroom floor with some minor adjustments, and I carry all my luggage on there. You don't need to go out and get suspension. Suspension does make a big difference, but this bike is very capable for world travel. The ergonomics of the bike. So I'm about 5'10 and a half on a good day. I did put bar risers on the bike and I put new foot pegs on the bike, which I think are necessary for world travel. So the bar riser is 34 millimeters, 35 millimeters from SW Motec, but that does allow me to sit up a little bit straighter when I'm riding and also to be able to, when you're standing, to not be so hunched over the bike and a little more comfortable and ergonomic. So the handling of the bike, I love the way that this bike handles. On paper, it's heavy just like the BMWs and the KTMs, but in this case, the weight is down so low that I think this isn't a class of its own where you can consider this an ultra dual sport. Now reliability, so I do have 50,000 kilometers on the bike. I do ride a lot of off-road. I do have a lot of fun with the bike. I do fall a lot, a lot. And some of the issues that I've had are cracking my pannier frames but that's a whole nother review. I believe the pannier frames should crack because if they don't crack, that pushes into the frame and it can do damage to the frame of the bike. It costs $3 to get those joints re-welded and I think I would rather them break than something on the frame of the bike. One other minor thing that's happened to the bike is with, is if you'll remember, the frame back here behind the windscreen with the weight of the GPS and the, I don't know if it has anything to do with the taller windscreen, that it snapped and I had to have it re-welded. In my opinion, those are too, a little bit of a weak weld. Um, if you do buy one of these bikes, just have it reinforced right away. It's uh, a simple fix. The only thing I've done with the bike is change the oil, clean the air filter, and that's it. Air filter is really easy to get under. There's clips under here. The first time it takes about two hours. The second time it takes about a half an hour. And now I can strip down the whole bike in about 15, 10, 15 minutes. So it's no big deal to take the fairings off. They come off quite easy. One of the things that I plan on doing to the bike is changing the spark plugs. Both of the spark plugs are fairly easily uh, accessible by taking the fairings off. I think that I can get them off without having the gas tank off, but I have taken the gas tank off. The gas tank takes, again, the first time is difficult, but then the second time, third time, you can get it off in 10 minutes. As far as the reliability or the wear on the bike, I replaced the chain and the sprockets and I also replaced the brake pads. That was done about 5,000 kilometers, so 45,000. 45,000 kilometers or about, eh, what is it, 26, 27,000 miles on it? Yeah. Um, a funny thing was, is the, was with regards to the chain and the sprocket, only the chain was worn out. The sprockets were good, but you know what they say, changed all three at the same time, so I just sucked it up and did it. So I'm gonna go through a couple points on the bike, uh, just show you how things work what I like and I don't like about it from tip to toe, top to bottom. So the instrument cluster on this bike, I think it's really well laid out. You have your speed up here, traction control, temperature, fuel consumption, and then odometer. Full display, really simple. This is the ABS disengage for just the rear wheel. Front wheel can't be disengaged. I use my Garmin Z Zumo 660 up here. 
Now on the handlebars left side, you have your high-low beam, the select and set switches for your compu onboard computer. You have your horn, you have your turn indicators. This is the optional heated grips. You'll notice the Velcro thing up here. Why don't you guys guess in the comments below what that's for? So everything is laid out really well. The thumb can get to everything over here, even the switch that I put on here aftermarket. On the right side here, you have your start, your kill, and your hazard switches. What I have is I have a throttle lock and a wrist, guard, a wrist reliever, I don't know what this thing is called, but uh, just for longer distances or if you need to take your hands off the wheels for just a second, you can do that. There's also, this is the compression dampening for the suspension down here. It's on the top and then they have a rebound dampening on the bottom. I believe they got that right. And with regards to the, the dash and everything, it's worked really well, no complaints. If I did have one complaint, it could be just a little bit brighter, but then it would be too bright at night. And then if they had an adjustable, then that would just be another thing to complicate it. Now again, as you may or may or not have noticed, uh, both of my front shock seals have gone. They went right at the 50,000 mile mark. So 30,000 miles on oil seals for the front shocks, I think that's pretty acceptable to me. Brakes, they lasted about 25,000 miles and they still had a little bit of meat on them. I just had a, I had a set and I wanted to switch them out. Um, everything else in the, with regards to the suspension, I really, really like. Again, it could be a little stiffer, it could be a little hard, more high performance, but I kind of wanted to prove you can take a bike off the shelf and ride it around the world. Foos pegs, foos pegs. The uh, original foot pegs were just a little bit narrow. They were rubber. They didn't put enough uh, weight underfoot and they didn't have enough grip for the off-road I wanted to do. If you're on the street, you probably could keep those. I went with some IMS foot pegs, $50 upgrade. Aces. All right, I can't, I can't get in this. I need to be in the shot because this is my vlog. The infamous airbox drain collecting plug things. I'm sure there's a really fancy name for it, but check them out, they're right here. This is just the left side of the bike. There's one that you have to open and drain. And then there's another one over here that you have to open and drain. Let me give you a little piece of advice. Don't try and put a cup under them. Just open them, put a rag under it. Like a tea tablespoon of anything comes out of there. My theory is I think that drains the oil out of the airbox because the overflow oil goes into the airbox, I think. So another question I have gotten is, is how these hook on top here. Now Honda, if you get the regular boxes, they just hook and kind of hang off of here. I think that's great. I had concerns when I bought this bike that this was going to support it because this looks like plastic. But on the inside here, it's steel. The SW Motec racks that I have, which I really love, have a lock so it keeps it all in place. It's never come out. Um, you can see down here, uh, I've, I've, I broke my, this was an Ethiopian break, Ethiopian fall, which I had rewelded. And my point is, is that if it breaks here, it's better than it breaking somewhere on the frame. Really easy to weld. I should have, should have painted that. It's rusting. Uh. But anyways, the mounting points, aces. This is my patent pending Dave McGuire Rotopax mount. It has rubbed, I think, on, on this just a little bit. The sprocket can't hit it because the wheel would bottom out before it hit it. So this is just the, the, the chain guard thing. Oh, I should cover my license plate. Uh, anyways, Rotopax, this has worked really well. I've used it once just because I wanted to change the gas. This thing has an 18 liter, I think it's an 18 liter gas tank. Um, there's gas stations all over the world. Uh, even in Southern Bolivia, I really, I didn't, I might have needed this, eh, but I didn't use it. Africa Twin Range, I can get between, in miles, I can get 250 to about 175, depending on how much of a jerk I'm riding like. The exhaust. So this exhaust looks really, really big, doesn't it? I took it off. It's really light. Uh, I looked at the Acropovic, and you save like a half a pound. Uh, and I also, you know, the sound, let's not joke, we buy exhaust for the sound. I didn't really like the sound of the Acropovic. I think that this sounds pretty good. I don't think there's a need to change it. And I think it looks, looks okay. Now one grape I might have is with this pillion foot peg mount. I guess I could have taken this off, but it wouldn't have worked with my pannier rack. Now, since I carry a tank bag, it's hard to get way forward over the tank like I should be. So what happens? The back of my leg hits this and it becomes just a little bit annoying. I'll show you. See, it hits, it hits right there and it's just annoying. All right, the seat, as you can see, stock seat. I did it because I just like the colors. 
Now, bear in mind, I rode my first trip around the world on a KLR on the stock seat, so I decided Africa Twin stock seat. Yeah, after about 200, 300 miles, your butt starts to hurt. I don't know, is some $500 seat gonna make that better? Maybe it will, maybe it won't. I'll never know. Works for me. Brakes, dual disc, dual piston. I've had no problems with the ABS, and I've never had any issue with stopping. Enough said. So to summarize, my opinions, these are just my opinions. You don't have to take them. Actually, don't even argue with me. You can't argue with me about my opinions. This bike is a perfectly capable round the world machine. Now where the variables come in is how much off-road you want to do versus how much street you want to do. A beginner to intermediate could take this bike around the world on mostly tarred roads with some gravel roads, no problem. If you wanted to do some more technical off-road riding, I think that you'd need to be an intermediate to an advanced rider, more comfortable with lighter bikes off-road, just with a little bit of training, so you feel comfortable handling a little bit heavier of a bike on off-road. Now this bike handles really well, I think, just because the weight is down lower, it doesn't feel like as heavy as it is on paper. The maintenance of the bike, fairly easy. Oil changes, air filter changes. One of the modifications I made is I put foam filters on there. I think they're from KNN? Not really sure. With regard to picking the bike up, in most instances, with the bike fully loaded, as long as it's in a decent position, I can pick the bike up by myself without unloading any of the luggage. Now, if you get on an uphill or a downhill or you get some deep sand, that's a different story. I have to take the luggage off. So here comes my disclaimer for this review. First of all, opinions are like everyone has one and everyone thinks everyone else stinks. I don't care. I bought it because it's a Honda, and Hondas are very, very reliable. I also bought it because I rode it, and it felt really, really good to me. So anyways, 2016 model Honda Africa Twin, 50,000 kilometers. I've been to 38 countries with this bike. I love it. I'm having a great time. It's a great medium to explore the world. If you have any questions, write them down below. I'll try and answer them. If you have any criticisms, keep them to yourself. Peace.